Welcome to Creekside Online. Our mission is to reach the world with Jesus one person at a time, with Christ, community, and compassion. We are so glad that you're joining us today. If it was your very first time, please take a moment to click the link below and fill out the online connect card. We would love for you to stay connected throughout the week and everywhere you go. And the best way to do that is through our church app. There you can watch additional messages and find resources to help you grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's free and you can download it wherever you download your apps. For us, church is much more than just a weekend experience. And we want you to know that there's a place perfect for you at Creekside. No matter where you're watching today, let's get ready for what God has in store for us. Hey, welcome Creekside and welcome to you online. Just uh, joining us here today. Just so good to be with you today. Beautiful weather lately, huh? Hey, we are just so blessed and so thankful that you're here with us in Florida. Wherever you're joining us from, we're just so glad that you're here with us. I want to just kind of go back a little bit here because it's become uh, part of my awareness that sometimes we say words in, in worship that, that maybe people don't understand. How many of you know what Alleluia means? Yeah, uh, j just about 20% of us. Alleluia means praise ye Jehovah, pra praise Jehovah, we praise you Jehovah, or, or we're trying to lift you up and magnify you, that's what that means. And, and when we raise hands, I don't know if you know what that means or not too, but basically I always think of surrender, you know. If, if somebody says, hey, put your hands in the air, <laughs> that to me means surrender, and, and that's what I'm doing, I'm surrendered to God, And so just wanted us all to kind of be on the same page when we sing songs and when we say things around here, just so that now when we sing that song, or you, you can know what that means and you can be fully engaged with that as well. I was thinking about drive through prayer the other day and thinking about, you know, some of the comments that people would make every now when they drive through. And then I saw this, this little story about a, a preacher and a youth minister that was out there putting a sign up and the sign said, Turn now or perish. A guy shook his fist out the window as he sped by. He says, you religious nuts, just knock it off. And all of a sudden you heard this big crash, a squeal, and then a crash. And the youth minister looked at the preacher and he said, I told you we should have put bridge out ahead. <laughs> Maybe some of you are thinking, I know a lot of a lot of other people have been asking, you know, what's going on? We got all these wars. Man, is it the time of the end? I would just, again, encourage you to read one of the best books I've ever written if you're concerned about the end times. And we all should be. Jesus is going to come back soon, is he not? He's going to come back. And, uh, and Then the End Will Come by Douglas Cobb. It's one of the best books I've ever read, just to tell you. I'll tell you, birth pains. It says that as, as it is in the time of birth pains, when birth pains come, there's those Braxton Hicks things, and then it gets more and more severe. They get closer together. That's kind of what we're seeing on the world scene. I don't know exactly when he's coming back, but I'm telling you, everything going on, we need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, you know, that things don't go back to the way it was in the Soviet era. I mean, our our, our brothers and sisters in Christ there. They're, they're worried. They're scared. So we'd be praying for those people. In fact, let's pray. Let's go ahead and go to God in prayer right now. Lord, thank you so much for your love and care to us. Our citizenship's in heaven. It's not here. But while we are here, we long to glorify your name. We long to bring as many with us as possible. And Father, our brothers and sisters in Christ are potentially suffering big in a big way over in Ukraine. And so we pray, Lord, that you would just come beside them, that they'd feel and they'd sense your presence, and they'd know the depth and riches of that presence more than, than any time that they ever were here on earth. And Father, we want that today for us as well, that we would be a, a, a vessel, a reservoir, not a reservoir, but a river of your power flowing through us. And that's what we want to talk about today. So Father, will you speak through me? Will you just, uh, just open our ears and our hearts for your wonderful word today? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, i got to tell you, the Bible does say the Lord's eyes range throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose hearts are completely his. The Bible also talks about power that he wants to give. And I wonder how many of us are aware of that power that he wants to give today. And we're going to talk about that so that hopefully by the end of this time, you'll have a fuller sense of what it means to have the power of the God of the universe in you and with you. Uh, that's, that's something that the Bible makes very clear 
in the book of Acts. So if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to turn to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You know, if you throw a rock into a pond, it's got this ripple effect, right? You throw it in, and right away there's this big wave, a big ripple, and then the ripples go out from there. In a real sense, this is the way Christianity expanded in the beginning. Jesus died, and he rose again. And there was only a, a Jewish Hebrew faith during that time. But because he died and he rose again, it says, for the sins of the world, he ascended into heaven. And this was the start of the church. As he ascended into heaven, he told his initial followers, stay here in Jerusalem. They stayed there 10 days. And he said, after these 10 days, basically, they didn't know how, what the time was, but he just said, obey me, follow me, and I will pour forth my Holy Spirit. My Holy Spirit will come on you. It's going to be like this ripple effect. We, that's what we see through the book of Acts. Acts of the Holy Spirit or Acts of the Apostles, someone said. But it, you see this church, you, you wonder how in the world in this kind of culture, if you really know the Hebrew culture, how in the world could the church turn the world upside down in such a short period of time? Well, it's because his followers had his power inside of them. Here's how it works in your life personally. It, it hopefully begins in you, this power to, to just kind of stay, have self-control over your fleshly impulses, and instead bring love and joy to those around you. It should start in your marriage relationship. In your marriage relationship, the closest relationship to you, or if you're a child with you and your parents, Parents, to you and your children, this love, this joy of his presence deep inside of us. And then it goes from there to others. My wife and I have been married almost 36 years now. And I'll never forget the words of the preacher when he said, look, Chuck, you're going into ministry. But your first ministry is your spouse, is your wife. Ladies and gentlemen, this can change your life. Your first ministry is to your spouse. Hit your knees and watch the power come into your marriage. Hit your knees together and in that humility, in that surrender, watch the power come into your, your marriage and your relationship. And that begins this ripple effect. Suddenly, you have this joy and love that you long to see go to your neighbors and from your neighbors out to uttermost parts of society. Wherever you are, you hope that they get this power of love and joy as well over fleshly impulses. That's really, that's really the message that Jesus gave when he said to his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He said this, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What was he saying? I have an overflow of power that I want to give, an overflow like we've been talking about, that this is what our church stands for. In John 7, 37, 38, he says, whoever believes in me, springs of living water are going to overflow with them. They're going to flood from within him. In John 10, 10, he said, abundance. I want you to have an abundance of my spirit, abundance of my life. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy your family and your kids. But I have come that you may have life, an abundant life. For each other and for, for even yourselves. But as you are a river of this grace and this goodness that I have, it'll just become more and more abundant. Don't become a reservoir. Otherwise, it just kind of collapses in on itself. Don't be, you know what a difference between a reservoir and a river is, right? The reservoir just wants to hold it all in. Oh, his love is just for me. No, it's not just for you. Oh, his power is just for me. No, it's not just for you. Putin thinks the power is just for him, right? That's the very extreme part of it. Of the power that God wants to give to each one of us is, is to flow through us into others' lives. In fact, this word power that he uses here is the word dunamin in the original language, the Greek language, where we get our word dynamite. God wants a powerful dynamite to flow in and through you to transform others' lives. But it all depends on your willingness to surrender fully to him. Are you willing to surrender today? fully. We're going to even show you more by the end of what this means, but I'll tell you, 
God wants to empower his people. His eyes range throughout the earth. 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, to strongly support those whose hearts are completely his. Is your heart completely his? Well, let's talk about this word witness, too. What does it mean to be a witness? To, a witness that's very simple. If you see an accident happen, you are now a witness to that accident. You, you know, you've taken it in your psyche, your heart. You know what's going on there. When, we, when Jesus asks all of us, and we ask everybody to be witnesses. We're just being consistent with God. Want, what God wants us to do. We're just to share with other people the goodness of God, his grace that transformed our hearts and minds. That you're a witness. You've seen it happen. You've experienced it happen. Maybe you haven't experienced it yet, and I get that. So, so you, you, don't, you don't really get that part, but you do understand from a worldly perspective what witness is. If you have experienced a transformation of heart and mind and relationships, you feel so good. It's like you've got this treasure chest, and you just want to share it. You want to be a river of that life to other people. You can't hold it inside. And this is what Jesus says to his disciples. You're going to have power. You wait for me. You surrender to me. You're going to be witnesses of this power in your life, the transformation that's going to happen in your life, because I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. God's Spirit inside of you is going to begin to flow. It's going to flood your soul. And that's what it began to do. And it's continued to do. And the disciples, they were just like, they took, it was like they took a sheet off their bed and just wanted to grab the wind, because that's what spirit means in the Bible. Wind, pneuma, spirit. It's just like if you set that sail in the right way, even a common sheet can take, and take a sailboat across the bay, right, with power. This is what God says, I want to do in your life. Just, just mold your life. Just put it at the right angle so that I can get behind you, so I can motivate you. From within. How does it happen? For the early apostles in Acts chapter 2, they received the Holy Spirit. They told the people the will of God. The people repented, which simply means change your mind and heart. And they were baptized. That means surrender to God completely. And they received the promise of what Peter said. Forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. They just began witnessing like crazy. And man, Jerusalem, half of Jerusalem was converted in just a matter of 10 years, they say. It's just an amazing thing that happened there. And it can happen in us too. It starts again very close to us. It, for them, it was Jerusalem. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. We're going to talk about that. And really, all of that ties into our faith promise as well. I tell you, uh, I hope some of you have gone and, and seen what we've done in missions over the last year. It's been amazing. There's an impact report. You can uh, put up your phone to those QR codes and look at the impact report or go to Creekside christian.com slash the promise and you'll see all the amazing work of God through you as he's flown as he's just flowed through your hearts and minds and your giving lives are being changed all around us they're being changed in Jerusalem Judea Samaria the uttermost parts of the world and we're going to talk about that in a second I want you to know Jerusalem, Judea, Jerusalem would be like the city, like our immediate area here, where we live, our neighborhoods, that would be our Jerusalem. And then Judea would be kind of like the county or the first coast region. And then Samaria is kind of a, a counterculture area. It, 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 but in a way, if when people registered that word Samaria in their minds, the, the Jews would have been, really Samaria? Because Samaritans, they did not like. And Jerusalem was just south of Samaria, and they would do everything they could to avoid Samaria. I mean, they would go way around it. They would travel, you know, a day extra to avoid it. They despised these people so much because they were not just, not just of a different culture, a counterculture, but they were half-breeds. They had intermarried, and, and they were disgusting to those people. It would be kind of like you decide to, to go to Georgia and so you decide to go to Clay County and, you know, Nassau County just to avoid Duval County. You all do that, right? <laughs> uh, we love Duval people again if you're from Duval. But let, 
That's basically the extremes that they went to. And so that's who he's talking. He says, Jesus says, oh, yes, by the way, definitely Samaria too. You're going to be witnesses to those people that you don't really even like very much. Those people that disgust you, guess what? I want you to reach them too. I want you to share your love with them too, the love that I've poured in your heart. You're not supposed to make this a reservoir. It's supposed to be a river to these people people and then Jesus says also to the ends of the earth also to the ends of the earth and that again is what faith promise is about the principle of faith promise is is very simple God trusts us with a hundred percent of what we have the breath that we have the talents the abilities a hundred percent of what you have is his he entrusts you though he says some of this you can enjoy but some of it you're supposed to use for my kingdom you're citizens of another land you think of the ukrainians and and you think about how they're pulling all their resources to defend their homeland we pull all of our resources to defend heaven and to bring as many with us as we can That's what we're doing here at Creekside, and that's what you've done. And so we basically say what what Malachi 3.10 says. God says, test me in this. Bring the whole tithe. And then the Old Testament, they brought not only a 10%, but they gave more than the 10% with thanksgiving. And that's the principle. You stretch. Faith is like a muscle. And you say, God, I, I know it's all yours. And so I believe that my life's not to be this reservoir. It's to be this river. And the amazing thing happens if you let all the water flow through you and you think, oh, I got nothing left. God gives you a bigger reservoir to hold it and so you can pour it out again. That's the amazing thing that happens in people's lives. So the method that we talk about here, that's the principle of faith promise the method that we go to do is we encourage you to take those sheets read them over pray pray with your spouse see if God doesn't give you a specific word about what he wants you to pledge to give to his kingdom work to Jerusalem Judea Samaria the other most parts of the world in this next year so the principle is pray and turn in a pledge friends we make our budget towards missions based on what you pledge next week next week's going to be the time and so I encourage you again to pray over this of course you can if you're not going to be here next week you can do it any time during the month of March and then by April we're going to tell you what we pledged last year over th- $300,000, and almost all of that's come in. You've done amazing work, and friends, we're turning the world around. That ripple effect is happening. So we want to briefly tackle all these circles of influence today. Why? Because it's an invitation for God's presence and power to flow through you to the hurts of people around you, to, to help those people around you, to draw them closer to God and to his kingdom, and that power will be felt by you as well it first of all it begins locally this is what we said Jerusalem we all have an influence locally friends don't you I mean your family your neighbors do do those people you come in contact with day in and day out did they know your Christ followers I mean if you were brought to court by those people and they were all sitting in the stands would there be enough evidence to convict you that you're a Christ follower to them how about it that's our local mission that's Jerusalem to to you and me they should definitely know that that we are Christ followers we try to help you here as a church to to do that you say well I can invite them to church I don't know I don't really know how to go for it that's fantastic okay that's a first step let let me help you get to the point where you can actually share a witness even more of how Jesus has changed your life you go to these classes they're new at Creekside or uh, Jesus at Creekside in fact just bring that person with you that you're trying to share. Hey, Jesus has changed my life. I don't know exactly how to share it all, but hey, why don't you come to this class with me? And it just, it'll be amazing as you see new at Creekside, you see this church family that, that I get to be a part of, and then as well, you'll just see why I follow Jesus, how he's changed my life. And you can come to Jesus at Creekside. We're going to be doing these on Wednesdays every month and on Sundays every month. I encourage you, what a great arsenal of equipping we have here 
All you have to do is decide to love somebody, to positively influence somebody rather than negative influencing somebody. Just show that love, share that love, pray about them, care for them, and then, you know, just say, hey, could, we, could you come to church with me? You know, uh, I'll take you for a steak dinner afterwards, right? You know, that way you know you have a stake in the church. You really do. I don't know. Cha-ching, bazing. Uh, but I'm talking more about what you, you know, it's, it is about what you say. You give a cup of cold water in his name, so you do these things, but you also have to share Jesus with others. We do have to do it in his name. Give a cup of cold water in his name. You do good. You have to mention Jesus when you're doing good to others. That's, that's important to try and get that in. Maybe it is just, hey, could you come? My, my church is a family to me. And that's the beginning of it. But I'm also talking about how you live your life. I was down off 210. I've shared this story before. Some of you have heard it. And I was going to the Publix area, and I was in a hurry. I kind of zipped in the park, and I got out, and a guy just, he just started in on me. You know, he bowed his chest up, and I was like, I just wasn't in the mood for it. That I thought, this is just a minor infraction. What are you just going berserko about? And I began to bow my chest up, too, you know. And I began to talk to him, and then I realized I had a Creekside Christian shirt on. <laughs> It humbled me really quick, you know what I mean? Listen, the staff of leaders talk about this all the time. We, many of you, and I don't want you to take your Creekside Christian bumper stickers off your back, okay? But can I just say, can we be careful how we're driving while we have those stickers on our back? Can we be careful what other stickers we're putting next to Creekside Christian Church as well? That's being a witness, and we are witnesses, positive or negative, for those local around us. Friends, it's a, it's a ripple effect. As a church, collectively and individually, we're all in this together to get as many to heaven and to be, get to heaven and bring as many with us as possible. Last week, we kicked off Bless Every Home. We had 130 people there. It was amazing. It was amazing. Everybody got excited because they began to see a real way that we can flesh out. And you can go to, to this QR code and you can see how it plays out. But it's very simple. You just pray for your neighbors. You, you care for them by giving cookies or doing other things that shows your love and care. And then you share when the opportunity presents itself. Do you know one lady went to that? Already she's given eight dozen cookies to all her different neighbors. As I tell you, that's like, it's like, you know, in the spiritual realm, that's like shelling an island. It's just softening the resistance. That's what you're doing when you care for other people. And this kind of as a way to track that, and I'm so excited uh, about the way that that plays out. Listen, our eyes and our heart need to be broken when we go up and down racetrack. Don't you see all the apartments going in? Don't you see the hundreds and thousands of people and children that that's going to represent? Friends, this is our local mission. And if we don't reach them, who's going to? Oh, we'll just depend on the church down the road. Well, what if they have that attitude too? How about we have that attitude? We're all going to link arms. And we're going to try to surround these people with the love of Jesus and share it in very intentional, intentional ways. And listen, when we come together as a church body, can I, just, can I just get a witness to this? That it is possible at times that we unintentionally build walls to outsiders we don't mean to build. I get it. We, we don't mean to do that. But listen, the world already is saying, oh, those church people, they're just hypocrites. If somebody goes to the length of finally getting their neighbor here and nobody talks to them. Can you imagine how that registers in their mind? Listen, love wins the day. It doesn't matter what they're saying about the church, but I can tell you love will win the day if you just show it in a very real way. But sometimes we can come and we can just kind of get used to those people that we enjoy hanging out with. Can I just challenge you? If you got neighbors that are best friends, but they're Christians, if you got relatives that are best friends, but they're Christians too, could you just say Sunday's not going to be the time when we chit-chat about our week? Sunday's the time where we're going to look to love people who are far from Christ. We're coming into the height, you know, Easter, the season where people, their hearts and their minds are more open. And as a church, friends, we've got to, to make sure. Let me, let me just encourage you. Let's have familiar faces up front. 
Everybody, let's, you know, we say park far, sit close. I want to see all your familiar faces all packed up here next week. Can we do that? Listen, as a church, we sacrifice comfort for the sake of others. That's the only way we're going to be a reservoir of his grace. I've, I've shared with this before. People oftentimes convey what we shouldn't convey, that you must believe and behave before you really will belong with us here. Can I just say here, can I get a witness at Creekside that you belong? Can we all start acting like all those outside these walls, they belong, we want more of them here. And so we need to behave the way Christ would have us behave and make room for them because they're going to want to sit in the back. That's the bottom line. They want to come and be a fly on the wall for a little while and see what this is all about which is important for us then to sacrifice where we have our name etched on our chair and go ahead and be a familiar face to me up front. This is very practical. Ben Merrill's a guy that goes around the nation. I've mentioned his name many times before, but he goes around the nation. He speaks to church, and without fail, these churches will say, we're the friendliest church in town, and they're so proud of it. And he tells them, no, you're not. I maybe had one person greet me this morning. No, you're friendly to each other. And you know what that's called? You Greek scholars know koinonia is in the Bible. That's for fellowship. It's called koinonitis. You have a disease. <laughs> you love each other very deeply. But you don't really love those who are far from Jesus Christ. Hence, it's time that we, the church, wakes up. Because the, world, the world's dying without Christ. And they need us locally to step up to the plate. Second application here is regional. That's Judea. That's Judea. The impact expands beyond here locally. It could be our counties around us, the first coast region, or it could even be our state, what he's talking about here. You cross the river, that's the region. Listen, I went over to Costco, you know, the other day, and I saw an LSU fan from our church. I knew he needed to be converted, man, big time. You don't know who you're going to run into. You don't know. But Jesus, when you see, he didn't even, he didn't just spend three years with his disciples. He had little impacts along the way. These 10-minute interactions along the way that were big-time encounters. And so wherever you go, you're spreading the joy, the sunshine of Christ. In Matthew 8, it said in Matthew 8, verse 2, a man with leprosy approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you're willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be clean. And instantly the leprosy healed him. Notice that Jesus touched him before he healed him. It was unwise. In fact, it was even illegal during that time to touch somebody with leprosy. How long had it been since anybody had shaked this man's hand or touched him or embraced him? In fact, I think, I've often wondered if that touch meant as much to that man as Jesus healing him. Just that love, that compassion. So we've just gone through two years of Hey, you stay six feet away from me. Hey, maybe I'll give you a fist bump. How about let's start shaking hands again? How about if we extend some hugs again? Okay. The very next chapter of Matthew's gospel, he healed a man who is paralyzed. And maybe you can't heal somebody who's paralyzed, been paralyzed for life. But Matthew says that Jesus began by encouraging this man and everybody around him by saying before he healed him, he said, your sins are forgiven. And, and for that, they, they really were furious and wanted to crucify him because who could forgive sins but God? But guess what? God has put us on this earth to encourage others by telling them, Hey, you're burdened down, but you're full of shame from what happened in your past. That's your past. You could be forgiven with Jesus. What an encouraging word that we have to share. Jesus defied culture. He went to women and children. That wasn't popular in his day. He went to the religious leaders that, that everybody knew were hypocrites. In John chapter 3, he told Nicodemus. And how about the Samaritan? He goes in the middle of the day. He has a divine appointment with her to start his ministry the Chosen app really makes this so beautiful and clear. In the middle of the day, he meets this woman and reveals to her that he's the Son of God by telling her 
what's happened in her past and showing her his love. That she's been married five times and failed in those marriages. And now she's living with somebody because she's given up on marriage. And Jesus says, I love you. I care about you. I have a divine appointment with you to just encourage her. Friends, I can only tell you, I don't know about you, but I've been broken in my life. And I'll never forget the words where I, I was basically so broken, I shared with somebody. And I said, this is the end. It's all finished. And they said, no, it's the beginning. With Jesus, it's just the beginning. He can take your brokenness and make something more beautiful. And that's the message of Christianity. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shouldn't perish but have eternal life. God didn't send Jesus to condemn you. He doesn't use, shouldn't use us to condemn people. We're to be these magnets of love. And friends, that's what you've been doing in the last year. If you go to those impact reports, you'll see all the amazing things you've been doing in City Rescue and, and, and St. Francis and, and Food Pantries and Chosen Rains Ranch and Camp. And we, we run through these every week. But then there's also the cross-cultural, right? And if you look at our pie chart here of how we've been given, you can see how the money's been spread around to our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. This, of course, is talking about people with maybe another language another skin color social economic situation different our international learning center is reaching out to people who are political refugees who come in here and they teach them english by having them learn to read the bible first and you know 90 percent of those become christians just having read the bible Safe Havens is, is that. Pre our preschool ministry gets people uh, from Buddhists and Muslims, and oftentimes they come and they visit our church. Man, we need to be one of the warmest incubators here for those people. When God's looking to put new Christians into his kingdom, he looks for the church that's the warmest incubator. So do you pe treat all these people that are counter or cross-cultural with respect and with love. When you go to the Asian restaurant, to the Mexican restaurant, to the Greek restaurant after church, do you give them very generous tips? Do you look for ways to reach them as well? Oftentimes, they're very new to this community. When that person moves next door and they're of, of another nationality, think about how, how lonely it might feel, how scary it might feel. For them to land in a totally different culture. It's up to the church to reach them too. And then of course internationally. Jesus says make disciples of all nations. The uttermost parts of the world. Did you know that my son Ryan, my oldest son and I have been dental assistants? <laughs> we got over to Ghana, Africa and we assisted people on, on tables we, and yeah, I had the stomach for it. I didn't know if I would. But as they pulled teeth, and I was right there cleaning things and instruments, why did they do that? It was a way to, to soften, again, the soil of a person's heart so that they could share the message of Jesus Christ with these people. I encourage you. we got four mission trips coming up. I encourage you to think about taking a mission trip. It'll change your whole perspective. My wife was like, you know, who are you when I came back, you know? She would hear me get in the shower in the morning, and I'd turn the shower on for like 30 seconds and turn it off. I did that for a solid month. Because once you see the poverty of a third world country and how precious water is, man, when I came back to the airport, I wanted to kiss the floor of the airport in the United States. And you begin to appreciate all God has given us, and you want to share and love on other people. 3.5 billion people are out there in the world who have never heard the message of Jesus Christ, and we should want to get it to them. Friends, the bottom line this morning is the overflow of grace is individual even more than it is institutional. I encourage you, pray, 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 pray hard. Pray. My wife and I prayed hard last year, and the Lord blessed us. We, we said, can we do that? We think we could do that. He showed us he could do ab above what we committed over the next year, beyond our tithes and offerings. Revelation 5.9 says, Jesus ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Someday, people are going to thank you that you don't even know because you gave. We're full on serious about missions here, if you can't tell about our mission to reach 
with one person at a time. We all know at least one person. You put their names on the shine sign. Hopefully, if you haven't, you've already got that name, and you're going to write them even today. Friends, we say Jesus is Lord and Savior of our lives. He's Lord. He's King. And he also changes us in attitude, behavior, and character. I'm a different person than I was last year. And also a disciple is somebody who's on mission with Jesus. You wake up every day and you go, Jesus, I'm with you. I'm with you on your mission. Creed Branson, many of you know him. He got the beard, the white beard. He kind of looks like Moses. Raise your hand there, Creed. Creed's, Creed's over there. He's, he's our executive minister. Doesn't he look like Moses? I mean, he's got the authority of Moses, too. It's, it's awesome. He's got the, the spiritual authority of Moses. But he told the story when he first became a Christian later in life. He was an executive with Papa John's high up, and he just couldn't help but share Jesus everywhere he went. And one of the executives said, enough of that. Creed, just knock it off. Can you just knock it off? And, you know, he toned it down a little bit, but he still shared it. Do you know that guy, Tim Rumsey's his name, became a Christian 12 years after that. And he called Creed one day, and he says, Creed, you know, it was that time that I gave you such a hard time that really nudged me in the right direction. I could not get it out of my mind. I share with you before, you put those seeds out, you do those good things, and you move from like a negative five to a negative four. You move a person. You know, we don't always see the fruits, but, but it's up to us to obey, to do the Lord's will. And how do you obey? You care. You pray deeply for those neighbors. You want to bless every home. You pray, you care, you share, you bless in whatever way you can. And that's what this faith promise is all about as well. Maybe you saw so many people baptized. I delivered cookies a couple years ago to a guy named Ken Dory outside his garage. Uh, I used to deliver cookies. I need to do it again, I think, you know. I'll never forget that. He, he ends up coming to church. He comes to our men's Bible study. We baptized him back in December. Do you know Ken said to me, he, he texted me that afternoon. He was just so full of joy. He was bawling his eyes out with his family all around him. He said, I'm just amazed at the huge outpouring of love here. It's, it's the most speechless I've ever been through the entire experience because I have never felt anything like how I felt today. Thank you so much, Chuck. And can I just thank the church too? My best sincere wishes to all the other members of the church who helped and who shared with us today. Later in that men's group, that week, he came to the men. He says, I've never experienced anything like this. He got a psychology degree. He said, I don't know how to explain it. It was like a jolt of electricity just coming through my body and my full surrender to Jesus Christ. Friends, here's how you describe it. That was power. Power. The Holy Spirit coming into his life. To begin an overflow of joy and love. That's so rich. That he knows it's not for him to hoard. It's, it's, he knows that it's not for him to be a reservoir. He knows that he's just got to share it. He's got to share it with everybody he comes in contact with you've heard it said you can choose your friends but not your family but can I just say what if it's both today in the kingdom of God it is both you can choose your eternal friends as well as your eternal family right here a people who will love you unconditionally who will welcome you into this family because we of all people have experienced so much grace, so much joy in Jesus and that he died to forgive our sins that, was, that stood opposed to us, that stood against us. We all understand who are in the family of God how we all deserve hell. And we just desire for you to have that. We don't want to be a reservoir anymore. We want to share it. And we ask you just to be open to hear the message from us even today I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing and I just pray that you'll just listen into the words of this song Father thank you so much for giving us such a joy in your spirit and in your grace 
Lord, help us. Help us to receive your grace in a responsible way, in a respectful way, and share it with others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We hope the message you just listened to had an impact on you. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at creeksidechristian.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Creekside Christian Church. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. We love you, and we'll see you next time.